When I was a child, my mother told me not to uh, read during meals, and I didn't like that at the time, but today I want to explain to you why I think she was right. I want to explore what happens to us when we get so immersed in the world of the media, we no longer pay attention to the world around us. I'm calling this mindless media use. But before we do that, let's do a small thought experiment. Close your eyes for a second and try to answer my questions. The last time you watched television, what did you watch? How long did that take? How much television have you watched all week? When did you check your emails last? When did you check your Facebook page or LinkedIn or Instagram or, or whichever of the social media you're interested in? How often do you do that? How much time does that take? Yesterday, while you were walking outside, did you use your phone at the same time? Did you uh, look up anything on your phone while you were maybe waiting at a bakery or a pharmacy? Did you listen to the radio? Did you hear any music? Which songs did you hear? And how long did that take? I'm fairly sure that for many of us, answering these questions isn't easy. But why is that? We spend a lot of time on the media. We used to think only children do that. But today, we're all using a lot of media. We're watching television. We're reading newspapers. We're listening to the radio. We're sending emails. And technology keeps inventing new ways to give us even more access to the media. So now we can listen to music in the car. We can watch television while we're on the treadmill at the gym. You can check your Facebook page on a laptop computer while you're in a meeting at work. You can read your emails on your mobile phone on the toilet. Or you can watch television on a, on a tablet computer while you're in bed. We're using a lot of media, but when I ask you to recall that media use, this turns out to be really difficult for us. Is that normal? I think it is. If you go to a yoga class, or to football practice, or even to work, those are activities with a fixed beginning and a fixed end. A television program has a fixed beginning and a fixed end, but television viewing does not. We can use the media as much as we like. We can start whenever we like, and we can stop whenever we like, especially if you're an adult. And even if you're a child, if you have parents who care about your media use and try to curb it. Every parent knows that that is very difficult to do. So we all use a lot of media, but we don't really think a lot about it. And the media make these, this worse, because there's always a new program we haven't watched yet. There's always breaking news we have to be aware of. There's always a new tweet to, to respond to. I want to explore what this may be doing to our health, by going through an average evening of an average household. And I'll start by looking at one of the issues uh, society, our, our kind of society is struggling with today, and that's obesity. Now, if you think about obesity and the media, one of the questions is, how would media use affect our weight? TV screens and, and computer monitors emit light waves. Radios and mobile phones emit sound waves. None of these contain any, any calories, so how would that affect us? Look at your evening meal. If you're watching television while you're eating, maybe you're watching the news or your favorite soap opera, and your partner is checking Facebook updates, and your children may be playing computer games on your mobile phone or on a tablet computer, not only are you not talking to each other, you're also not listening to your body. And satiation research shows us that if you are unaware of the signals your body is giving you to tell you that it's full, that you'll eat too much. And by mindlessly engaging yourself in the media, you've effectively switched off your body's ability to communicate with you. This is why my mother was right to tell me not to read during meals. Let's move to the next part of, of the evening. We've done all our chores, our ho homework and our housework, and we're trying to relax. We're probably watching television. What many people do at that point is go get a big bag of potato chips. Potato chips and soda, or maybe cold pizza slices and beer, or cheese and wine. Today, technology is making it possible for us to pause whatever we're doing on the media, go to the fridge, get some more, come back, and continue our media use without having to miss anything. Now, obviously, when you're getting the big bag of potato chips, you don't intend to eat all of it. You're still feeling guilty after the last time you did that. 
You woke up at three in the morning, thirsty, and with a barbecue taste in your mouth. You don't want that. But once you get back into the media world and you look yourself out of the here and now again, and mindlessly you end up eating the whole package. So if you're asking me, how can I gain weight watching television? My answer is, count the calories. Look on the package of the snack you're eating and look on the bottle of the drink you're drinking. It's probably on there. I did a study of, of young Belgians a couple of years ago and we, we asked about this. I've had the average Belgian adolescent in the study, an hour of television meant the consumption of 160 kilocalories. That means that an, a normal evening of TV viewing for young people is the same as an extra meal every day because they like it, because they're used to it, because they're not paying attention. Let's move to the next part of the evening and to another health issue, sleep. Never in the history of, of mankind have we slept so little. A part of the problem is media use. It's very difficult to stop uh, watching television or, 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 or being on the internet and, and go to bed. There's always another television program you should be watching. Uh, there's always another channel you can turn to. And if there isn't, well, we now have Netflix. We really don't have to stop watching television anymore. Um, if you're playing a computer game, there's always the next level to try to get to. And once you get to that next level, there's another level waiting for you. But there's no better example than email. You finally manage to switch off all the media you've, you've been using. You're in your bathroom getting ready to go to bed. You want to go to bed. You can see your bed. But you're also holding your mobile phone. And part of you thinks, it only takes a couple of seconds to check my emails. I only need one finger to do that. A couple of seconds and I'm in bed. And so you, read your, you check your emails. Only you have three new emails since the last time you checked it. And the last time was probably five minutes ago. There's one email from your boss. There's an email from a colleague you don't really like. There's an email maybe from a client you've been trying to reach for weeks. And so you have a quick look at it. And now your heart rate goes up and you feel angry or stressed or excited, maybe even happy. I don't know what you feel, but one thing I do know is you no longer feel sleepy. So first, our media use is making it hard for us to get to bed. And once we're in bed, it's making it difficult for us to fall asleep. Now let's imagine we have fallen asleep. Once we're asleep, our mindless media use comes back to haunt us in our dreams. We still don't fully know what dreaming really uh, means, but a lot of sleep experts seem to agree that dreaming is how we deal with what happened to us during the day. What most of these dream experts don't seem to realize, however, is that much of what happens to us through the day is media related. In fact, the last thing you probably did before you went to bed was watch a movie for two hours in which a giant robot came back from the future to try to kill someone. And if you're using all that media stuff mindlessly, those movies you've seen, the frightening news you've seen, the annoying email you've received, the frustration of trying to get to level 15 of your favorite game, that's going to come back in your dreams one way or another. The young people I studied reported an amazing number of media-related dreams. Interestingly, many of those were positive dreams, not nightmares. But that's not the point. My point is that our mindless media use follows us to the bedroom, into our bed, into our sleep. Now surely that's the end of it. If I'm saying that dreaming is how we deal with stuff, then surely it doesn't go any further than a good night's sleep. I don't think so. I think that when we are exposed to the media, we're constantly learning something. And that learning changes us and stays with us. A lot of people think that that's a strange idea. Because if we're watching George Clooney save a patient in the emergency room, we know we're not watching a real event. We're just watching entertainment. This isn't really happening, and we're not really there. Everybody knows that. We know we're watching a police show. We know we're watching a romantic movie. We know we're watching a situation comedy. Everyone older than 11 is able to tell that they're being exposed to fiction and entertainment. So how could we learn something? Well, part of the problem is the fact that we're being mindless. We're not paying attention. And our mind is wide open for little influences. And look at what the media are telling us about this. 
writers and directors will give interviews and say they went through amazing trouble to make sure the movie was realistic. And the actor will tell us he went on rides with real ambulances and he worked with real doctors in real hospitals to make sure that his, his acting looked extremely realistic. And so we're constantly being told that the story may be fake, but the facts are real. And so slowly we're learning. When I ask my 18-year-old undergraduates, uh, these are social science students with no background in emergency medicine. I always speak to who don't even have had any first aid training. And I ask them to demonstrate how a defibrillator works. And one of them will get the paddles, will go like this, put the paddles on the chest of the other one, who's the patient. He will yell, the first one will yell, clear. <laughs> and the second one will go like this, pretending to have received some kind of electrical shock. On one level, they know they're getting this from fiction. On another level, they think they've learned something about the real world. And so all that exposure to the media is gradually teaching us stuff. And so George Clooney and his <coughs> colleague doctors in fiction are telling us what to expect from an ambulance and a hospital and a doctor and a nurse. And celebrities in cornflakes uh, commercials are telling us what a healthy breakfast should look like. And our friends on Facebook and Twitter are telling us what a good diet is and why it works. None of these are, are medical professionals. And it works because we're being mindless. Because look at what happens. You're watching a movie and all of a sudden you think it's not realistic. You're listening to the news and all of a sudden you realize you disagree with the newsreader. What happens is we're taken out of the media world. We wake up, the magic is gone. We come back to the here and now. And I think that's where we'll find an answer to what I've been talking about. Now, some of you may have no problem stopping television viewing at any time you like, or have no problem realizing you're caught in, a, in a loops playing the same uh, level of a computer game for two hours, or can stop themselves checking their emails whenever, uh, whenever that's possible. If you're one of these people, you've probably stopped listening to me a while ago. <laughs> but everybody else will recognize at least some of these problems. The problem is mindless media use. And the solution is to become more aware of it. The solution is to gain back control over our media use, one potato chip at a time. I want you to think about this right now and to make that decision to take back control over your media use. And what this means is you may be halfway through that big bag of potato chips before you realize what you're doing. You may have just watched the third episode in a row of your favorite TV show when you realize it's getting kind of late. Or you may be trying to get to that next level of that computer game uh, when you realize you've been trying the same uh, action for a long time. That's fine. That's when you're starting to gain back control. You can now make a conscious decision. Maybe you want to finish the whole bag of potato chips. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you want to watch the next episode. Or maybe it's better to go to bed at a reasonable hour. I don't care. I mean, media use is relaxing, it's entertaining. It may even be necessary to send an email at midnight if it's important for your career. I just want it to be something that you decide consciously and not mindlessly. The average person gains about a kilogram, that's two pounds in weight a year. That's great news for us because that means that these kinds of effects on our health are gradual effects, incremental effects in small steps. And that means that every little step, every little victory when we're trying to regain control will make a difference. So I want you to think about uh, being in control, about making conscious decisions about your media use instead of mindless decisions. I, want, I don't want the remote to be in control of you. I want you to be in control of the remote. Thank you.